entrepreneurs and visionaries. Welcome to another Monday Night Live training where your journey to business success accelerates. Join us for insights, strategies, and tools to elevate your business while keeping your budget in mind. It's time to transform your passion into profit. Your host, Corey von Bill Foster, is about to take the stage. Get ready to be inspired and empowered. The future of your business starts now. All right. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Okay, look, I got to make sure I, I wait back. Hi, Instagram. Um, welcome, welcome. We have Facebook in the house. I always like to shout out the platform. So shout out to our public Facebook account, our private Facebook community, um, LinkedIn and Instagram Live, and then also YouTube. If you're watching the replay, shout out to you as well. And I think we're gonna start chopping these up for TikTok. I feel like I want to get everybody involved, right? I just feel like everybody should get a chance to get this information because we're having a good time. We're learning. We're growing. 2024. Well, I should say 2023 was amazing. 2024 is gonna be even better. Um, if you're new here, I always say engage with me, shoot your shot. If you have questions, comments, concerns, uh, no matter what platform you're on, definitely first say hello, let me know you're in the house, but also feel free to comment. Um, even if I don't see it live, I will respond. So please don't think I'm ignoring you. Um, I'm trying to look at everything as it's happening, but if I, you know, I'm human, if I don't see it, I definitely do respond after the fact. So definitely, like I said, shoot your shot, comment, get engaged. All right, let's see, because I'm going to do good. I'm going to actually stay on, on target today. <laughs> like, let me get my notes up so we can get going. Um, I'm going to say this once, because I don't think we should have to apologize for being real humans. My child is here today. He usually is not. I've told him I'm doing a live, but if he so happens to bust in the door into the office and you happen to hear a child's voice, it is what it is. I'm not, I'm not even going to apologize. I'm going to just say it is what it is. If you have a kid, you understand. If you hear dogs barking, it is what it is. It's, it's just that kind of Monday, <laughs> okay? But this show must go on. Um, tonight's topic, reflecting and adjusting, fine-tuning your 2024 goals. This is the last Monday of January. That's crazy to say. The last Monday in January. Oh, and before I get too far in, let me, oops. I'm sorry, private Facebook community. I'm supposed to always tag you guys so you know we're live but also you should be marking this in your calendar i'm just saying i'm just saying let me just put it in here real quick make sure i typed it in right there we go all right so back to this topic so reflecting and adjusting fine-tuning your 2024 goals like i said this is the last monday in january and woo time has flown by um the fact that you know, I felt like we were just waiting and waiting and waiting for 2024 to happen. We were like, oh my gosh, some of us were ready for 2023 to be over. And some of us were just excited for like a fresh start, a new beginning. I think I was a bit of both. I was like, okay, 2023 did good by me. However, I'm ready to spread my wings, try new things, implement all this stuff that we've been working on. So I was excited for 2024, but I was also grateful for 2023. Saying all that to say, now we are almost in February <laughs> and I talked on in our private community earlier today and I said, you know, I think some of us maybe have hit some of our goals. So yay, shout out the wins. Some of us may have over challenged ourselves um, a little bit. You know, we got to be honest, some of us thought we were going to do a lot in January and then some of us may have made some goals that we probably could have hit, but for whatever reason, whether it was we just didn't get around to it and or um, life happened, we didn't succeed. It's okay. You know, January is kind of, it, it's it's like, <laughs> I don't know how to call it, but it, it's just like, it's just like a fake start. It's like, okay, we said it's the beginning of the year, but let's just start in February. Sometimes that happens and it's okay. So wherever you are in the, the atmosphere of your goals, whether you did accomplish, whether you were trying, whether you just need a, a new start <laughs> in February, that's okay um, because that's why we're here. And that's also why I focused on goal setting, um, not only in December, but in January, because yes, as a business coach, I really want you guys to start planning your year before the year starts. 
Um, however, I know that doesn't always happen. And so it's really important for me to give you guys an opportunity to learn and grow as needed. So that's why we also focus on goal setting in January. Now, February, we are moving to branding. I, I kind of said that in um, my little impromptu live this morning. Um, so get excited for that. If you're sick of goals, I get it. I just wanted to make sure we all started the year on a good note. Um, but we are going to jump into branding next month. So get your pen and paper ready. Gone are smart goals. We're not going to talk about it no more for a while, um, even though we should still be checking in. But today we're really going to focus on kind of summing up this topic of goal setting um, because we have to also be real about things are going to happen. Um, I know some people don't like the idea of smart goals because they're like, well, when things happen, it's like, you, you know, that goal gets thrown out. And that's not actually true. And so tonight we're going to talk about how we can fine tune our goals, but also how we can adjust as needed, because that definitely happens in the business world. And we shouldn't be afraid of that process either. All right. But before we dive too, too far into the topic, let's get a few things out of the way. And I'm sorry, my Instagram, I might leave y'all a little bit because I realize I can't adjust my screen while I'm talking. So let's jump in here. For those of you who do not know um, me or you don't know about the brand. Um, first of all, hi, I'm Corey, um, and I own I Rock Marketable Business Solutions, and we are a business that really is dedicated to helping entrepreneurs just like yourselves, coaches, consultants, authors, speakers, basically small business owners. And our goal is really to just to help you achieve what you deem a success. And one of the biggest cornerstones of our business is the fact that we do that keeping your budget in mind, or like I like to say, on a, doing business on a shoestring budget. Um, I just think that no matter your background, no matter your circumstances, no matter your budget, no matter your mindset, whatever the case may be, um, you can be a successful entrepreneur. You just need the right tools, the right strategies, and the right people behind you to help you understand and fulfill your full potential. Okay, so that is kind of what we do here. And I always like to start with this because I think it's important for you to know where our perspective is before you hear any of our presentations. Because, yes, there are amazing other ways to do all the things we talk about. Um, but you all may not have the funds available to do it. I've had so many coaching programs I've been involved in where you pay or should I say invest um, in an amazing you know, products, right? An amazing program just to get in it and find out you have to invest thousands of more dollars to implement the things that they're suggesting. It's not that those things don't work. It's just that some of you are not in a place to be able to implement them. So if you're here in the IROC world, you're always going to hear us talk about affordable strategies. Do we also have clients who utilize more um, expensive investments? Absolutely. I have clients who do invest in ads, who have teams, who do all the things. But the things that you're going to learn here, if you only have a nickel to your name, but you have access to a laptop or a desktop, heck, even your phone, if you're, if you're feeling spicy, even your phone, you can still succeed. So definitely, I just want to kind of make sure you guys understand where we come from um, and why we do things the way we do and why we talk about our solutions the way we do. All right. And again, a little bit about me. I don't like to talk about myself too much. But again, Corey Palmer Foster. I would just say Corey. <laughs> we don't have to do it. That's a long name, y'all. But I'm a speaker. I'm a certified business coach. I'm a trainer. And I'm also, like I said, the CEO of IROC Marketing Business Solutions. Um, if you don't know anything about me, know this. Um, since we're talking about today, we're going to be talking about kind of acknowledging the milestones and things like that. Um, if you don't know anything about me, know that just a little over a decade ago, I was in the medical field. I was happily working my nine to five. Um, didn't think about this thing called entrepreneurship, but ended up after having a rare eye condition, having to leave my nine to five and explore what entrepreneurship was. Um, long story short, so happy that I learned a lot of things along the way to becoming this business owner I am today. However, there were a lot of bumps, there were a lot of hurdles, there were a lot of struggles, there were a lot of challenges. And so my goal is to share those with you all and share the solution so that you don't have to go through it. All right, I'm still working on how to how to say that speech, <laughs> that, that little part of the presentation, uh, because I'm always like, I don't wanna keep saying it, but again, you have to know where um, we come from to understand why we do the things we do. And so since you know, hey, I'm self-taught, you understand, I really believe, not only do I speak about this solution and the way that we believe in doing business, but I also lived it. 
Um, and so now I'm, I'm happy where I am and I'm happy that I've been able to help so many other amazing entrepreneurs realize their full potential and have successful businesses. All right, now that I've tuned my own horn a little bit, <laughs> let's get off of that. Um, I always like to have this slide in here. Instagram, sorry, you can't see the slides. I might turn the screen around one day, but anywho, just for your knowledge, this isn't to sell you anything here. This is always a free workshop, but in case you're interested, because I realized I got a message from someone just, what was it, last weekend or last week? And they've known me for years and was like, hey, are you a virtual assistant? I was like, oh my, <laughs> like I have not been talking about what we do enough. So I'm gonna always say this slide now, even though it makes me cringe to even talk about what we do on a free on a free workshop, but I have to because people will still ask me like, what do you do? Here we go. So the company, uh, which is not me, the whole company, um, we have several options to support you as small business owners. We have done uh, with you coaching programs, um, which is our our you know bread and butter. This is what we do every day, all day. We have everything from power hour coaching sessions to uh, courses that you can do on demand. We also have group coaching and one on one coaching. We have our done with you and mine consulting packages. So if you are a company needing more consulting work, you want to include your team, things like that, we can support you there. We have done for you marketing packages, which start all the way from ghostwriting your material creating your design to actually managing your social media accounts. We do that as well. We have done your way virtual assistant. So if you are ready to expand your team, but you're not looking to try to figure out how to hire, fire, train um, individuals to work with you, we have amazing trained virtual assistants that can support you. And then last but not least, we also have our um, done as you need, our a la carte services which are designed for you to not have to be signed into any big long contracts. Those are things like websites, logos, proposals, um, video editing, we've made certificates, all kind of little quick jobs that we also do. And again, all of these products are designed for coaches and consultants and they keep your budget in mind. So they are pretty budget friendly. All right, so now that we've gone through all that, let's actually get into the topic for today. All right, so like I said, today's topic, reflecting and adjusting, fine tuning your 2024 goals. That is the main topic for tonight. That's what we're gonna be diving into. Like get your pen and paper ready. All right, so we're gonna take care of three things today. Look, I can't even see my screen, go back, here we go, boom. All right, we're gonna do some goal review. Let's, we're gonna talk about some goal reviewing because I know a lot of you probably made your goals by now. I've been talking about it enough, however, a lot of you make them just like that business plan and stuff them in a drawer and never look at them again. So we're going to talk about reviewing your goals. We're going to talk about adjusting your goals, when to, how to, why to. Um, and then we're also going to talk about celebrating and learning um, because that is a big part about you succeeding, especially when it relates to your goals. All righty. Now I can check my screen. There we go. So I'm doing all this tech stuff while I'm talking. All right. The importance of regular goal review. Um, this can't be understated. You need to regularly, got to throw that word out, regularly um, review your goals. And yes, you may have made these goals January 1st, and it's only, what, January 29th? Guess what? Before February 1st, on February 1st, you're going to need to review those goals. You're going to need to take stock in where you are, right? You need to look at your goals and say, are, are the things that I'm doing right now, these mini goals, these action steps, are they still aligning with my long-term goals? Sometimes we have to check ourselves and be like, all right, we said yes to these you know, projects this month. Do these things still align with where I'm trying to go? Because even though we said in the beginning that we weren't gonna say yes to things that removed us from our goals, sometimes we still do. Sometimes we feel in the moment like, you know, we feel that, you know, we have to say yes to things or we have to say no or people might need us or what have you. And then we realize we didn't get the action steps that we originally said we were going to do those small goals. We didn't get those done. And so we have to take a break and say, hey, let's look. What did we do all January? Are these things, are these actions that we took, are they aligning with our long term goals? And if they're not, it's time to say, hey, hey. <laughs> like I like to say, hey, girl, wait a minute. Um, let's get back on track. Let's start doing the things we know we're supposed to be doing. So say, for instance, one of your goals was to get up an extra hour early to maybe check your email or put out a piece of content or work on a project and you've been sleeping in. 
hey girl, hold on, what are we doing? We need to get back on track. We need to get back to setting up that alarm, figure out why we're not getting up. Do we need to go to bed earlier? Do we need to set multiple alarms? Do we need to have the project next to us in bed so as soon as we roll over, we get it done? Do we need to have an accountability partner? Because we need to make sure that we are still in line, um, aligned, I should say, with that long-term goal. Because when that project is due, we can't say, oh, well, life happened. No, <laughs> you kind of let life happen, okay? We got to keep ourselves honest. Um, we also have to say things like, are we out here wasting time? I'm going to let that sit for a second. Are we out here wasting time? So um, let's see. Did a new season of your favorite show come out? <laughs> um, are we deciding to make elaborate dinners for the family? Um, are we spending some time on Amazon, Shein, Fashion Nova? Um, did we decide to babysit a friend's child? I mean, the list goes on. Are we out here doing a whole bunch of things saying, we're, oh, I'm so, so busy that we are not getting our goals met? We have to say, are we wasting time? Um, and I'm a big component. I talk to my, my clients about this all the time. They hate it, but they go, they do it anyway. And I say, audit your time. Because if you tell me you're too busy or that you don't have time, then show me. If you can show me that truthfully you are busy doing things you have to, not want to, but have to do, then I'm going to say, okay, cool. Let's find some more time or let's adjust our goals based on the real amount of time we have. But what tends to happen, just going to be honest, what tends to happen is we find out that you're just wasting time. <laughs> that, that really you probably have an extra five, ten hours a week that you could be working on your business, but you're not. Um, because you're doing things that you don't have to do. All right. And, I, and, I, and people don't like to hear that, but it's true. I tell people all the time, I meal prep, not because it brings me joy, <laughs> not even a little bit. Um, I meal prep because I find that if I take three hours on Sunday to meal prep, I don't have to spend five or more hours during the week cooking right? Wasting time. And I know you might not say, well, you know, you're providing for your family. That's not wasted time. But I'm still providing for my family, making sure they eat by meal prepping on Sundays. Um, and truth be told, when I'm meal prepping on Sundays, I'm also getting to enjoy my TV show. While I'm meal prepping on Sundays, I'm also getting to do laundry. While I'm meal prepping on Sundays, I might even get to kiki with my son or whatever. Um, and so it's not time wasted. It's actually time earned back. And so we have to look at our schedules and say, is there any wasted time um, that we could be putting towards our business, especially for those of you who are still in your nine to five and trying to balance working plus building up this business? Um, I had somebody recently tell me um, they were like, oh, you know, I would love to grow my business, but, you know, I'm just going to have to wait until I have more time. And I'm like, OK, first of all, it's not my job to convince you. <laughs> if you especially if you ain't paid me, it's not my time to convince you of anything. I was just like, okay, but I know in the back of my mind that this person just isn't making time for their business. And sometimes, just like I like to equate it to like weight loss, people don't do it until they're ready. <laughs> you know, like they can they can see that they got to keep buying bigger clothes. They can see the scale number rising, but until they are mentally ready and they have decided to lose weight, I have not yet. Um, then they won't. And the same thing is with business. I can tell you that you have time. I can tell you strategies to make more time. I can tell you you can be successful. But if you don't want to prioritize your business, then you won't. All right. So you really do have to keep in mind where's your time going. And then be honest with yourself. Are you prioritizing your business? Right. Um, also, by checking in regularly on your goals and kind of reviewing them, you also can track your progress. Um, it's important because if you don't track your progress, a lot of things can happen. One, you can fall off your timeline, but you can also be going to like really fast. You could be making way faster progress than you thought and you haven't figured out, like you haven't even started planning what you're going to do once you get there. And so it's really important for both sides, the positive and the negative to say, let me track my progress um, because that kind of leads to my next point. It'll keep you motivated. One, it'll either kick you in the butt and say, get to it. Or it'll say, dang, you out here doing it. And it makes you happy. It makes you excited. You're like, wow, like, I didn't even think I'd be this far along. You're like, but I am. I talked to you a lot about my December. Historically, my business, my business 
has always been slow in December. It just has. I have a lot of women clients. I have a lot of educator clients. And if you've been in education, you know that that December 1st of January check be looking a little funny because of um, how they do their break. And so they tend to not invest in my type of work um, during those months. Plus, moms are always shopping for families. They, they're looking at their budgets real tight. And so historically, that has been one of my lowest, if not lowest, months of um, revenue. And so this, this past year, 2023, I said, you know what, I'm going to make a goal for myself to do what I call a win back campaign. I don't mind giving you the strategy, win back campaign. And in this win back campaign, we focus on getting old clients to either renew their contracts or come back and start a new contract or upgrade or downgrade, whatever. We just wanted people to purchase with us who have purchased with us before. We said, you know, we'll still do all the things we're doing, but we're not going to give a big focus on getting new people. Um, because again, the people we attract, women, educators, and things like that, they're just they're not gonna invest in us this time of year. They're they're more not they're more than likely not going to. I shouldn't say they won't. And so we did that. And I tell you, December was my best month ever. Um, it was crazy. The amount of contracts I got in December was it was just <laughs> just thinking about it makes me excited. I'm like, it it was crazy. Um, and the craziest part is that means I was probably leaving that money on the table every year we've been in business until last December. Um, and so sometimes you just have to track your, like I said, I was tracking progress. I was like, you know, I want to make this go by the end of the year. I want to start the year, you know, with X amount of dollars. Like we were looking at all the data and I said, let's do it. <laughs> let's do it. Um, and by reviewing our goals and saying, hey, the year's not over and doing that big incentive, we were able to meet our end of year goal. All right. And it also kept me motivated for like, if we can do it in December. We can we can make 2024 this amazing year as well. So sometimes guys reviewing your goals, like I said, it doesn't have to be a negative, whether you reach your target or not. Sometimes it's just going to motivate you to keep going. Um, so kind of going into reflecting on your progress. So when you do look at your goals and you look at your actions, what have you been doing? We have to say we have to ask ourselves a few questions. What have I achieved? It's so important. I like to start with that because I like to start with the pluses first. Um, but yeah, what have I achieved already? It could be a small achievement. It could be a big achievement. But what have I achieved? Um, because it'll allow you to at least give yourself a pat on the back. I don't like the idea of tearing yourself down constantly. Yes, there's always challenges and hurdles in business, but let's also be happy <laughs> some of this time. Like I don't, I'm not in business to be, make myself sad or make myself unhappy. So what have I achieved? If you haven't asked yourself that question this month, please do. What have you achieved this month? It could be that you've, you, you've signed up for more education, right? It could be that you're trying new things. You're pushing yourself out of your comfort zone. Any small action that you're taking that goes towards your goal, you've achieved it. Write it down. Make note of it. Um, for those of you who don't know, and I'll talk more about this later, I have a wins jar. My mentor gave it to me um, for my birthday around the holiday season i'm a sagittarius um but yeah it's a wins jar and so i can easily see there we go camera i can easily see some of my wins these are big wins but there's lots of other wins too and so what have i achieved first question next question is where have i faced challenges let's go ahead and meet those head on let's say okay i understand there have been some challenging moments do i need to put things in place to ensure that these challenges are not going to be consistently in my way. They're not going to just slow me down because um, life happens, right? And I explained that earlier today when I was on a live, I was like, oh my gosh, my husband's car broke down. And so a challenge is the fact like, hey, my kid is here. Um, I also have to rework my schedule a little bit to make sure he gets to things. My husband's going to need my car. It's, it's a whole bunch of stuff. So it's a challenge, but I can I can maneuver a little bit for a little while with it. If it would be a long-term thing, I would have to say, okay, do I need to buy another car? Do I need to do this? And, and take care of it because you don't want your challenges to weigh you down. And so you don't want to ignore them. You want to say, okay, here, I acknowledge this challenge is here. I acknowledge that it's getting in the way of what I'm trying to do. Let me find a solution for it now because what will happen is those challenges, one, eat up your time, but then they're also – creating bigger issues, right? So say for instance, my husband's car is out of commission for a long time. And then I just said, well, he can take my car and I'll just not work in the evenings so I can get my son where he needs to go. 
Well, that means all those hours that I usually work are gone. I can't coach during those hours. I can't make new products during those hours. And guess what? Now, six months down the line, I haven't gotten halfway to my goals for the end of the year because I haven't devoted enough time to them. Now, that little challenge, that little issue has turned into this big colossal issue that's probably making it harder for me to make my revenue goals, my profit goals. Now that impedes on my family, look, we ain't going on vacations, all these things. So definitely now in January, when the problem is small or the challenge is there, go ahead and face it, figure out a solution and move forward. Okay. Also, relook at your priorities, right? Reflecting on your progress, think about have my priorities shifted. Right? Have my circumstances shifted. I have a good friend um, who I reached out to recently. She's like, girl, I'm on maternity leave. Obviously, her priorities have shifted. Not that she doesn't want to be a successful entrepreneur, but when you have a new baby and you just have babies, no, your priorities shift whether you want it to or not. You have to supply pretty much all the life saving skills you have to keep that baby alive. You got to feed it. I'm about to say you got to water it, <laughs> but you got to feed it. You have to clothe it. You have to, you know, give it all your attention. And so if she had, granted, she knew she was having a baby, but hey, maybe she would have the baby early or what have you. She might have to readjust some priorities for this month um, to ensure that she could meet that priority. And then she'd have to adjust uh, the rest of her goals based on her now availability. And so it's okay. Priority shift. Things happen. Believe me, when my eyesight went down and I've had issues with that, or if my son needed me, I shift those priorities. Business is not always number one. Now, let's just be clear. I'm never going to tell you business has always got to be number one. Sometimes, hey, rent got to be paid. Mortgage got to be paid. You may have to slow down your business to focus on your nine to five um, because they're like, hey, I see your work is not getting done. We're going to fire you. If not, well, your priorities have shifted. Okay. And everybody may not be this extreme, but I just want us to be clear that priorities happen. Circumstances shift. And that means our goals have to be shifted as well. So as we reflect on where we are, we also, we also have to be cognizant of those changes as well. And then I also want to ask you as you're reflecting your progress, how are you tracking this progress? Because there has to be some type of metrics. I was actually tuning into one of my favorite social media managers, and she was like, are, are you putting an ROI next to every action? So the ROI is, ROI is a return on investment. And so she's like, because that's one of the tracking things that you should be doing. And I think that's amazing. Um, I don't necessarily put it on every little thing, but I think it's a good tool. So for you guys, how are you tracking your progress? Are you just saying yes or no, pass or fail? Or are there, are there um, levels to it, right? Are there milestones to it? And so just for me, I want to talk about kind of tracking progress. Some are more fine-tuned than others, but like I said, we have the wind jar this is a quick little visual aid to track progress my goal is to have this thing so stuffed this ridiculous by the end of the year but this makes me happy when i come into my office and see there's already things in here and it's only january and you know i have to move stuff around and be able to see the bottom of it so that's like okay cool simple way to kind of sort of track progress again it's not super scientific but it still gives you a little endorphin rush to be like all right we're making progress I also use, this is a really great, I don't know if you all can really, really see it, but it's a goal setting planner. It's by, um, it's called Cultivate What Matters, and this is called Power Sheets. Um, but I love using this. I don't use it every year, you know, without fail, but it's really just a goal setting planner. You can't plan anything but goals. Um, there's not like daily pages, weekly pages, none of that. It's monthly, and then it's just planning sheets. Ooh, excuse me, but it's a great goal tracker. Something else that I have, and I've already said sorry earlier today, is my fault. This is not available to you guys yet, but I plan to have it available in February, is my business planner. I actually designed this last year, and it's a daily planner. It's a thick baby. It's a thick one um, because it actually allows you to put all your business in one place. Um, but this is great, too, for tracking your goals. There's actually a planning sheet at the end. Of, well, it's a recap sheet. Like a review sheet at the end of every month and then there's also a planning sheet at the beginning of every month so that you can track your goals and things like that as well and i promise i will make this available but this is the main way i track my goals and then thank you to my assistant i don't i can't even really show you guys this but if you're on TikTok, you've probably seen it's called the big ass planner or the big ass calendar excuse my language but it's basically they make them really fancy i have my assistant make it let me 
try to sit back so you can see it. But it's basically a year. You're not going to do the whole thing, but it's a year at a glance. Um, and so basically, <laughs> I have a calendar of the whole year at a glance. And say, for instance, I want to have like projects um, that are going to be big projects or I have yearly goals that will be checked in quarterly. I can put the check-in dates here. I can put the milestones here. And it's a visual representation you can put on your wall to actually mark those things off. And so it depends on the type of person you are, how you like to track things. Um, some of you may be virtual. This is actually the printout for these are the virtual version of this. Um, I've also used task tools. We also use project management software. Um, the list goes on and on. But figure out how you want to track your goals. Um, because it really doesn't matter how, it just matters that you do. Okay, so I'm just giving you some of the, the ways I track my goals. Some are, like I said, very cut and dry. Um, let me actually pull a page for you guys so you can see. Let's see. Hold on. I, I might be able to show you some of this stuff is personal, my goal setting planner. Here, I'll show you a sheet that is not done so you can see it. Hopefully it's not too light. Yeah, hopefully it's not too light. We'll see if I can angle it right. I don't know if I can. Hold on. There we go. I'll show Instagram in a second because I can't get both of you to view. But if you look really close down here, you can see that you can literally mark off every single day. Um, so you can mark off all your daily actions and you can mark it off every day for that month. You can do weekly actions. You can also do monthly actions. And so I'm big on that. So if it's a monthly action, that's like something big, like, um, for instance, like clean floorboards or something like that. Because I want to, you know, one of my goals is to keep my house clean. Um, then I can mark it off that it was done that month. But if it's something like drink water, I don't give you really basic stuff, then I mark it off every single day. And I just highlight it. And so some of you may need that much accountability. Um, but some of you may be very disciplined where you can just say, oh, yeah, I did it this month. Um, or yeah, it's done. You may just be able to know it and not mark it, but you need to have some way to review your progress. All right. So why are we doing this? Well, because you can learn from the past. You can see what worked, what didn't work, what kind of sort of worked, and you can improve on what you're doing. None of this stuff is just to do it. Just like we talked about business plans. It's not just to say that we did it and mark it off and say, okay, yeah, I planned my goals. No. The reason we plan goals is so that they can be a roadmap towards our success. If we took the time to figure out what we want and then break down the goals, I always say work backwards, then what we should be doing is following that roadmap that we created for ourselves. What often happens is people will make the goals, they will do the vision boards, they'll do all the things, and then they'll just do what they want all year and then wonder at the end of the year why they didn't hit the goals. Well, that's because you didn't use it. <laughs> you didn't check on it. You didn't, you didn't revisit it. You didn't adjust. You just set it and then let it go into the air and so we really have to learn from the past we have to learn what works i have been a person that will say i will work out for the longest time like i don't mind saying it out loud y'all because you can see i have not lost no weight <laughs> um but I, I at first i would be like okay i'm gonna get up in the morning right and then i said oh i just need workout clothes I have gotten up in the morning and said, girl, no, <laughs> I have gotten workout clothes and worn them all day and not did a jumping jack. Um, but what I have realized is that my son has to work out um, for Boy Scouts. And I've noticed that I don't mind working out with him or working out at the same time while I'm trying to make sure he does his workouts. And I'm like, this works out. And guess what? It's like the middle of the day or the evening. That works for me. And so I'm learning from my past failures what doesn't work. And then I'm also learning... Oh, some of these things work. I can habit stack them. If you've read Atomic Habits, you know about habit stacking. Um, and so you have to figure out what works for you. I do my high maintenance to be low maintenance every Sunday. And I've, I've talked about this too. I've had friends that have wanted to implement it and they'll try to do what I do. And I'm like, don't do that. <laughs> do what works for you. And so they learn what they like. And now everybody knows, like I, I'll get video calls from friends that are like, I'm doing your high maintenance to be low maintenance. And they'll say, well, this is what I'm trying to do today. Um, and they learn, they learn what works for them and they learn how they can make progress as well. So again, a lot of this is just give you ideas, but definitely don't just say, I failed. I didn't succeed. Why didn't you succeed? 
Because if you really cared and it was a real priority, there had to be a reason why you weren't able to meet your goal. Did you not meet your goal because the industry changed? Um, because you didn't know a tech, you didn't know that there's a tech you needed to have. You didn't have the finances to um, implement it. You didn't have the support you needed. Your mindset wasn't right. Whatever the case may be, why didn't you succeed? And then again, adjusting and seeing, okay, maybe I need to have a coach. Maybe I just need a mentor. Maybe I need an accountability partner. Maybe I need to invest in some education. Um, maybe I need to change my schedule. All those things will help you. Um, and you'll be able to move forward more effectively if you take the time to, again, learn from the past. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, so let's talk about some strategies. I've already given some, um, but I wanted to kind of be clear about um, my recommendations on how to adjust um, your goals kind of mid-course. And mid-course can be at any time. But when you see it's not working, how do we adjust? Well, first, assess your original goal. Make sure it's still relevant and achievable. Sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's not. I like to let people make their own goals, but sometimes you have to be honest. People will say they've made zero dollars the last three years they've been in quote unquote business. They want to make a hundred grand. Is it possible? Absolutely. Is it likely? It depends on a lot of factors, but a lot of time with the people that I work with, it's it's not. Not the first year you're really doing business as a business owner. So we have to assess the original goal, like I said, make sure it's still relevant, make sure it's still achievable. Then if we haven't already, divide those larger goals into smaller, more manageable milestones. I like to call them action steps. What are we doing? Not just monthly. What are we doing uh, weekly? What are we doing daily? Heck, hourly. What are we doing to add up to that milestone, to that goal, to the short-term goal and to the long-term goal? Right? Reprioritize. What's the most important? Yes, there are tons of things we can do, but what should we be doing with our time? Because that matters. Oftentimes when I'm working with clients, I'm noticing that they're doing the tasks that are in their comfort zone first, not necessarily the things that are most important. And then what happens is those things that are most important don't get done. And they realize like, why, why am I not making progress? Because you're spending all the time on the fun stuff, but you're not actually doing the things that get you more clients. And I've had to bust a lot of bubbles and say, okay, now, how are you gonna make money on that? <laughs> cool that you did it. They're like, oh yeah, I made this new webinar. Awesome. But we haven't built up this email list. Let's let's do that. You didn't call nobody yet. And they're like, oh, because they don't want to call people. Um, and so we have to reprioritize and make sure that we're actually doing the things at the top of the priority list. Um, and then allow for flexibility. Things are going to happen. I always like to go back to COVID in 2020. Um, things happen and you have to be willing to be flexible. People get pregnant. Let's throw that out there. Some of you are still of that age. Uh, whether you're planning it or not, people have car issues. People have new jobs, right? Or lack thereof of a job. Things happen. Don't give up at the first sign of a challenge or hurdle. Address it and make a solution for it. It may mean that you're going to get to that goal slower. It may mean that you can fast track it. But don't just give up. Figure out a solution and keep going. Last but not least, and we are doing good for time today, y'all. Look at me trying to stay on target. Um, last but not least, I want you to celebrate. Celebrate, celebrate, celebrate. The same way we deal with children and we're like, oh, if you do this, you can have candy. Or if you do this, you can stay up late. We need that too. We need to have some type of acknowledgement that we are doing a great job. If you are waiting to the end of the year to celebrate, you're going to be sad for most of the year. <laughs> Let's just be honest. So we need to acknowledge the wins, big or small. We need to give ourselves personal rewards and they need to make, make sense to us. Right. If you are diabetic, then obviously you're not rewarding yourself with candy. Right. So you need to say, OK, what brings me joy? Right. It may be a staycation, getting away from the family, getting away from the kids quarterly. Hey, if I hit my milestones, I'm going to get myself a hotel. It could be a nail treatment, a spa visit. Heck, it could be just time alone, a bubble bath. Y'all know I love me some bubble baths. Whatever the case may be, give yourself a reward um, and make sure that you do it every time. And if you need other people to celebrate with you, do it. If you don't know, I homeschool. And when the kids were younger, I would tell them, if you get an A on an assignment, a quiz, or a test, we'll dance for you. We'll do like a dance party. And so we'd be working. And as long as I wasn't on the meeting, they'd be like, I got an A on a quiz. We'd turn on music and we'd just be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And we, we'd just be excited for each other. And when I tell you, those kids would be fighting, you know what I'm saying, trying to make sure they get an A. And now, even though they're older, 
um, and we don't do a big dance party, they still are like, hey, I got an A on this. I'm like, go ahead, you're great. And we actually do have little rewards for them, even though they're older. You have to do that for yourself sometimes. And like I said, it doesn't always have to be something big. Maybe treat yourself to a dessert. Maybe just treat yourself to, girl, you rock. You know, just saying it out loud to yourself. Um, because we can definitely be hard on ourselves. We know how to be negative and say, you suck. Who do you think you are? Like, oh, you knew that wasn't going to work. But how often do we just say, girl, you're amazing. Look at you. I've I been here talking to myself, y'all. I'd be like, girl, they ain't got nothing on you. <laughs> they ain't got nothing on you. There's a video on TikTok. Oh, my gosh, where the little boy is like, you are blessed. You are confident. Like, I'm like, yes, I'm in here talking to myself, talking myself up. Um, and you should be doing the same, especially when you have a win especially when you have a win, right? You might be sharing with your, your accountability partners when something's negative, but share with them you have a win too. Like, oh my gosh, not just that something great came out of a result, but like, yo, I pitched 25 companies this week. That's a success whether they say no, whether you hear nothing, like you did that. So celebrate it. Share your success with others. Let's say your accountability group, share it with your friends and family, share, heck, share it in our private community. I want to see the wins. Right, because I'm gonna show call you out when I see stuff. I'm like, oh my god, this person launched a podcast. This person's out here. They got a business doing this. They got a business doing that. I'm just, I'm excited. You got a speaking engagement. I want to know about it. Toot your own horn, right? You got a book published. I'm like, yeah, let's go. Because why should I be upset that you're doing great? I should be excited for you, right? And then you should be excited for me. And we can all enjoy the growth that all of us are having, which is so important. Also, make sure you are reflecting on your journey. I shared a little bit about that in the beginning. Like, when I think about where I came from, <laughs> I have to tell my husband all the time, like, dog, like, we, we've been through some stuff, you know what I mean? And you, when I even put it in perspective of, like, there are people our age that are still where we were, right? And no knocks to anybody's journey, but I'm just talking about me. Like, I know my struggle. I know that I was a single mom living in the projects. If anybody's even familiar with my area where I live, like I was in, we call them number streets. Like I was in the hood hood, right? You hear gunshots all the time. Me as a single mom living in affordable housing, y'all. <laughs> like people in my neighborhood was paying like $5 in rent. Like it was not uncommon for people to be on EBT, you know, the good old food stamps. Wick, I definitely have had Wick in my life, you know, get that baby some milk, some milk. <laughs> um, but yeah, all of those things, even working hard. I wasn't like somebody who wasn't working when I was living that in that place, living in the hood with the gunshots. I was still working full time. I was still in school full time and I was just struggling, struggling. Never in my wildest dreams could I have imagined that I would have my car paid off. Ooh, got to do a little shout, y'all. Car paid off. Ain't no car paid. I remember having to pay 300 and something dollars a month on a car payment. I remember watching them repossess my car, not once, but twice. <laughs> Y'all, it's real. I remember. I remember, oh my God, I remember even when I got married, like begging family to be like, can you please help me pay for this? And when I tell you last year, I spent three times how much I spent on my wedding just on a coach. <laughs> Y'all, like, it was like, here, take it. Um, And it's not a two-mile horn. It's to, to have perspective and say, yo, you're a homeowner right now. Right? You are a homeowner right now. Sometimes you got to just say, look where I come from. And again, it ain't got to be that you, you know, you were in the hood and, you know, you didn't have it. If you're from the black church, you know, everybody used to smoke crack or did something. They was a prostitute once. Like, it ain't got to be all of that. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't want you to have to be at rock bottom to come up. But we all have a journey. We all have had a journey. And when I tell you, it is so great to look back and be like, wow. Wow, look, look, I'm just thinking she if y'all if y'all real OGs, y'all remember when I couldn't even see <laughs> when I when I tell you when I had the diagnosis and they was like, girl, you're going blind, go home. Like I didn't came from that to here to here. Like that is crazy. And so I really want you guys to celebrate the milestones because again, it ain't necessarily about the revenue. Yes, let's celebrate that. It's not necessarily about the new clients, but yes, let's celebrate that. It's about your progress. It really is about your progress. It's about you have come a mighty long way. Like, shout, look, I'm going to shout out Comfort. She in the private community. Because I remember, what, a year ago, Comfort was struggling. 
struggling with her confidence. And I can say it now because if you look at Comfort's page, Comfort is out here. She doing lives. She posted. She is doing her thing. She she out here traveling to Africa, helping the children. Like she is doing all this stuff. And I remember when she was just like, I can't possibly go live. <laughs> I can't possibly record myself. And she is out here doing the dag darn thing. Right, Misha's in the private Facebook group. Not even a year ago, Misha was like, you know, I'm just starting out. And I was like, girl, you don't work with all these big businesses. She was like, yeah, but I was on Teams. I wasn't doing it. You know, I, it wasn't me by myself, you know, with my own logo behind me. And Misha out here, I think she just did a workshop and she got something coming up. I was like, what? Look at Misha. Misha hit me up and was like, yo, I'm ready to go on your podcast. I'm ready to do a master class. I said, okay, let's go. Confidence was up. Like, it's crazy. Look, shout out Lakeisha. She up in here too. What'd she say? She said, man for the wins. Lakeisha, look, shout out to her. We used to actually joke, Lakeisha, my bad. But she would always start stuff and <laughs> never finish it. She would make amazing stuff and never sell it. Lakeisha out here doing the dag darn thing, selling her amazing crafts, her food, all the dessert she's doing. She got a podcast. She's on what? Season, season two of the podcast. Life cracks us up. She got a post that went to 10K recently. Like she's doing her thing. And so I just want you guys, and like I said, I'm sorry if I'm not mentioning everybody. Um, Y'all know how it is when you're just speaking off the cuff a little bit. But share your wins with us because it's amazing to go back. And that's what really brings me joy. Like it's not the money. Well, actually, I'm not going to lie. The money makes me happy too. But (laughs) what really hits my heart is seeing you guys really grow in your businesses whether you started off again when you started off here or there like shout out to dr d i remember like some of y'all know who dr d is from educators moving on i remember when i got with her first of all shout outs for believing in me with me being in business only six months but when i got with her we was just doing a little this doing a little that now she has retreats in cancun for her ladies they be where else were they chicago I got to go out to Chicago to help her with her ladies. Like they are all over the U.S. Shoot, she done got a cook in her house. <laughs> she is doing all this stuff, helping women. She is out here rolling in the dough. Shout out to you. But yeah, Malika Humphrey, shout out. Was it Emerging Consultants? I believe that's the title of her company. I remember when she we started working together and she maxed out all her credit cards, y'all. Look, I'm telling everybody business. And I was like okay <laughs> believe it if you believe it i was like i hope it worked out for you and then what a year and a half two years later she was on 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 target to make 10 million in government contracts y'all 10 million with an m it's crazy y'all it just it's just you you don't even know that like, this is just january 2024 you don't know where you are going to be 12 months from now you have no clue believe me when i started this company as a virtual assistant right i was just trying to see if anybody would pay me for anything believe me anything <laughs> i didn't even have i didn't have a website i didn't have no social media i was like yo you need something i sounded like a hustler you know how they be at the store like yo, you need something you know just let me know that's how i was but people believed in me and i got better and better and now i'm like i can say no to folks i ain't worried <laughs> like hey i'm gonna work with what i want to work with i'm gonna do things the way i want to do it and it's crazy and i don't mean to harp on this moment but i moment but i do want you guys to understand like i get that some of you are sitting back saying i don't know if this is gonna work you're sitting saying you know i want this but i don't know if it's for me all these things are going through your head but i'm telling you guys if you believe in yourself if you keep at it if you're willing to invest in yourself you can succeed you can. I don't care what nobody says about the industry. There's room for all of us to succeed no matter what. All right. Look, I didn't I didn't give a word. Amen. The doors of the church are now open. <laughs> not playing with y'all. But I do. I believe in you guys. And I will say this. Um, again, this is not a sale by any means. But if you feel like you are ready to move forward in your business, if you do think that you need some support, I just want to let you know I'm here. And if anybody's ever talked to me, like you can put a post in a group, like anybody ever actually talked to Corey for real, they'll tell you I am just like this in real life. If you're on one of our free mini brand audits, if you're on one of our strategy calls, power hour coaching, you're going to leave with way more than you expected to. Because I, I don't care if you work with me or not, I'm at least give you some, some stuff that you can work on. Like, hey, if it was me, I would be doing this. <laughs> um, and if you do work with me, the sky is the limit. So I do encourage you guys, and I'll put links 
on the platforms. Definitely at least sign up for a free mini brand audit, y'all. That's like a whole couple hundred dollars worth of stuff. Um, and it's free for you guys. But it also gives us a chance to talk one on one and see where you need support. And if I can't support you, if I'm the right person for you, so be it. If not, like I said, you'll be way better off than when you started. All right, look, y'all made me sweat. We, <laughs> we in here going. All right, but anywho, that is it for today. Um, as you guys know, every Monday, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we do these Monday Night Lives next month, February. Can't believe you're saying that. We are going to be talking all about branding all about branding so if you're struggling with really understanding your brand identity being able to show your brand to the world definitely tune in if you're in our private community you can already rsvp for all of the topics in february linkedin we're working on updating all the events there for you as well and if you're not on those platforms get on <laughs> so you can get all the information ahead of time um but like i said definitely engage i know we talked about a lot but feel free to comment even if you're watching the replay i will reach back out Feel free to DM me if you have a question as well. I know some questions are a little bit more private. I do respond to that as well. But guys, have an amazing night. And I will talk to each and every one of you next time. All right, bye guys. In the journey of entrepreneurship, success is often about having the right guidance and tools at your fingertips. Welcome to iRock Marketable Business Solutions, your compass to business excellence. We understand that as a service-based small business owner, your path to success is unique. That's why iRock offers a wide range of coaching and consulting services tailored to your needs. Imagine gaining the knowledge you need from the comfort of your own home. Explore our quick on-demand webinars, courses, and toolkits designed to accelerate your business growth. But we go beyond that. Join our vibrant community in our group coaching programs or experience personalized guidance with our one-on-one -on -one coaching and consulting services. At iRock, every program comes with incredible bonuses. These bonuses are designed to support you on your journey, helping you bridge the gap between where you are and where you wanna be. Some of our bonuses include expert speaker sessions, group Q&A calls, guides, checklists, scripts, and more. Ready to supercharge your business journey? Explore our coaching and consulting services. Get the guidance and tools you need to reach your goals. Empower your business with iRock Marketable Business Solutions.